exercise that we need to be more built. Where we are in, in our life, in our experience right now, chances are it's decisions that brought us there. Hello? Choices that we have made have brought us to where we are now. So, what do you think is going to get us out of here? Another choice. The choices that we have made have brought us to this particular place that we are right now. So ultimately, it is going to be choices that we're going to have to make. And the sooner we make those decisions, the better off our life is going to be. Too many people spend too much of their life in limbo, wondering, ifing and eyeing. And if, how many of you have ever read the book or saw the video clip of Who Moved My Cheese? Okay, nobody, another person too? Who Moved My Cheese? You know, things change. Things happen in life. And if you're not in a situation where you're moving and changing and shifting with the shift, you're gonna be, you're gonna be left behind. You're going to be in distress. And um, so what we are talking about, what we have been sharing is that, what I'm finding is that more and more of the problems that people are facing is the result of poor decisions that they have made. And one bad decision followed by another bad decision followed by another bad decision will put you in an awful place. Somebody see it there. So what we start, what we really need now is we can look at how, look at how we are making decisions. How are we making decisions? And um, how are we going to address that? All right, so we move on quickly. Let's go through what we've done for the last couple weeks. And then I can go into what we're going to do tonight. Last week we talked about attributes that destabilize the environment. We said that inconsistency, poor or lack of communication. Many times, most, you know it's amazing that in the 21st century, we have more tools to communicate with. We have iPhones, iPads, we have um, all these different devices to communicate with. And yet so many relationships are falling apart for lack of communication. Isn't it amazing? We have more tools to communicate with, and yet we communicate even less than we used to. As a matter of fact, the truth be told, um, many people now, I'd rather even, you know, don't, don't, don't call me, just send me a text. I'd rather you send me an IM than even call me. And I've even found myself doing that sometimes. My children are like, you know what, why are we talking? You know, like, why don't you send me a message? You know, because we can edit and we can delete and we can change it. You know when somebody's IM and you didn't type in something, it says type in, then it goes blank. Then they come back on again, they have, they have time to edit all that stuff. Right? And that's the kind of society that we live in. People can get up and work from home in their pajamas, you know, never leave your house, have your laptop and doing their work from home. And so as a result of all this, we're losing a lot of interpersonal skills. We're losing a lot of negotiation skills. We're losing a lot of, you know, um, conflict resolution skills because you don't have too much conflict working at home by yourself, right? The conflict is what, when do I eat lunch and what time do I go outside, right? So poor communication, self-interest, um, founder syndrome, it's another thing that hinders, um, destabilizes the environment. Inappropriate conduct and attitude, incompetency, um, poor chemistry. I told you about three things that people need. They need to have good chemistry, right? The three questions rather people ask about you. I'm not going to go into that if you didn't get it. Can I trust you, right? Do you care about me? Will you be there for me? Right? Questionable character. You know, persons, we have people that are saved or you're in a relationship, the character is shady. Listen, you can't, you can't build on shady characters. Okay? Like I was teaching on Sunday morning on the fact of, I was given the example of my son when he was a little boy, and I said, you, you know, you went to bed, he says, no, this is sweat. You know, see, if you keep telling yourself, you know, now listen to how people lie to themselves. People lie to themselves all the time. They lie as little children, and they grow up as adults lying to themselves. You can't get something out of something that's not there. And I see people spending too much of their lives trying to take something out, extract something. Uh, you know when you squeeze an orange, you're juicing it, after a while it's done, it's nothing but skin. You gotta throw it away. You can't get anything else out of it. Sometimes people are trying to get something out of something that's simply not there. Okay, lack of trust. Um, 
no regard to time. This destabilizes any environment, any type of ministry. If you say you're going to get together, if you say you're going to meet at 8 o'clock and pray, and you have the key, and you don't show up till a half hour later, you know, and we're sitting outside waiting for you, it destabilizes the whole thing. Because now you're annoyed, and so you, now you really can't pray effectively because you're annoyed that you got up early to try to make it, and the people that took you to get here early didn't make it themselves. And they tell you that they were going to be late. Destabilizes the whole entire ministry. Amen? Okay? Destabilizes um, teams, whether it's an ushering team, whether it's cleaning up, whether it's music ministry, whether it's rehearsal. You know, if you don't have people that have respect for time, it destabilizes everything. You say you're going to meet you there at 6 o'clock, meet me at 6 o'clock, get there at 5.30. As a matter of fact, to meet on time is to be late. I haven't stopped teaching yet, I'm just doing some review. Okay? But if we're not committed to time, and respect other people's time, because if you respect my time, if you respect me, you respect my time. Okay? So if you don't have respect for your time, at least respect my time, because I value my time. Because your time is the one thing you'll never get back. You'll never get back. You can lose money in a deal, and you can make that money back. But you will never get your time back. You will never be 31 again. You'll never be 35 again. I will never be 44 again. I will never be able to recover the time that I lost. Okay? So time is very precious. Time is very valuable. All of our time is precious. Everyone's time is valuable. And uh, if we don't respect other people's time, as a matter of fact, I always say, money respects time. Poor people have a lot of time, no money. Rich folks have lots of money, but very little time. Okay? Money is attracted to people that have respect for time. I said again. Money is attracted to people that have respect for time. Bad decisions. Lack of leadership, lack of vision. All right, let's take it to my home screen to my corner. We're gonna take it. Um, you can disconnect this device and we're just gonna bring up one screen. Open your Bible screen tonight. Let's see what scripture I'm going to bring it up for me. I need my portfolio, please, sir. I don't know what happened with the green How many saw this endeavor this past week? This gentleman that walked across the Grand Canyon. How many saw it? How many heard about it? Okay. okay. So tonight I want to talk, talk about stretched to possess. Say with me, I'm being stretched to possess. As you look at him walk across this quarter mile long wire. Do you think that he just got up one morning and says, I think I'm going to walk across the Grand Canyon? Do you think that happened? Um, thank you, sir. Do you think that he just got up out of his bed? Do you think that he had months to prepare for this? Do you think that there was time that was put into mentally preparing himself, emotionally preparing himself, getting his family ready? Do you think that he was... Uh, Maybe doing some short walks. Huh? Because I think recently he walked across the Niagara Falls. Okay? And so do you think that he just got walked across, you know, somebody's swimming pool and then went from that to Niagara Falls? Do you think he walked across his backyard, his child's swing in the backyard, and then jumped from that to walk across the Grand Canyon? Uh huh. He went and he grew in stages. And how, this is how our faith, this is how our faith moves. God causes your faith to grow in stages. Okay? Your faith, you don't go from, the Bible says we go from faith to faith. And from glory to glory. It means that God will use what you've experienced last year. And just when you think you've come to a point, a place in your walk with God, where you say, okay, I thank God, I learned something from this. All of a sudden, God says, guess what? I have something new for you. He said, Lord. Is everybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. You ever notice that as soon as one thing in your life comes to a close and you begin to praise God, don't worry, when you wake up tomorrow morning, there's going to be something fresh. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Am I talking to the right people tonight? There's some, as soon as you cross that line, and jump off and say, praise God, I made it. Let's look over the hills. To 
There's something else up ahead. That's what I'm talking about. And what begins to happen is that you start looking at yourself and saying to yourself, if God has brought me across last time, then surely God is able to bring me over the next day. I'm going to need your faith tonight to move into another place. I'm kind of transitioning now on what I've been teaching because I want your faith to lift up a little higher. Because I need for your faith and my faith to go higher because the devil is not going to get the glory based upon what he's trying to do.